Hello all of my YouTube people. I hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for being here. Bird. Why do you gotta ruin things, man? Hello all of my lovely YouTube people. I hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to my channel. I have got a little bit of a scientific episode for you all. Not really scientific, but mathematical for sure. And hopefully interesting and helpful to anybody who might have been wondering how to figure out what size air filter is best for your motorcycle. Before I get started on this video, I just wanna let you all know that this is not sponsored by anybody. I'm not promoting any product and I'm not a professional. This is all just information that I have discovered and it was just for my own interests and curiosity so that I would be more familiar with my own engine and the kind of airflow that it is gonna operate with the best. So I've been asked before how I knew what size of an air filter my engine required on my shovel head because I mentioned one time in one of my really old videos, one of my first videos actually, that I knew for a fact that my engine was getting enough air because I knew that my air filter was the proper size for the amount of intake that my engine required. And somebody asked me in my comments way back then how I knew how big of an air filter I needed or how I knew that my air filter was big enough. I have planned on doing this video for a while. It's been kind of intimidating because there is a lot of math. So I've broken it down as simply as I can and I've got it all written out on my whiteboard here. So I'm gonna explain to you guys what all of these numbers actually mean and then you guys can hopefully take this information and use it to your own benefit. So if you're anything like me and you don't like big air cleaners then this will probably be helpful to you. If you just like the biggest air cleaner you can get then you might not really care about this. So I personally I don't like very big air cleaners. I wanted my air cleaner to be as small as I could make it and um, this equation really helped me to know what size air filter I could actually get away with. Well, how small of an air filter actually that I could get away with. So right here, I've got it all written out and we're gonna do a few equations to get to the final point. The final point being, what size of air filter do you need to give your engine the amount of airflow that is required for it to perform at its best performance? That sounded kind of weird. So the first part of the equation is going to be your cubic inch displacement multiplied by your maximum RPM multiplied by your volumetric efficiency. And for anybody who doesn't know what volumetric efficiency is, the volumetric efficiency of your engine is the volume of air that your engine will breathe on its intake cycle. So theoretically, your volumetric efficiency should be the equivalent of your displacement. We're going to assume our engines are breathing at 100% volumetric efficiency. Chances are that they probably are not. It's more likely breathing around 80% or 90%, which would be like 0.8 or 0.9 here rather than a one. For kind of simplicity of the equation and just to be on the safe side, we're gonna assume that we're breathing at 100% volumetric efficiency. And the reason how come we're not getting into volumetric efficiency and all that is because that's a whole nother can of worms where you're gonna have to figure out your thermal efficiency and just a whole bunch of other stuff to really figure out what your volumetric efficiency is. And I'm just not really into doing that. So I'm just gonna assume it's 100%. We're gonna go cubic inch displacement multiplied by the maximum RPM multiplied by volumetric efficiency. And that is gonna give us the cubic inches per minute that our engine breathes on its entire intake cycle. So on a four stroke engine, it takes two full revolutions of the crankshaft for your engine to ingest its maximum volume of air. So I'm gonna be using my motorcycle as kind of a reference point here. My engine is 96 cubic inches with a maximum RPM of 5,500 revolutions per minute. And I know this because I have a rev limiter set at 5,500 RPM. 
with 100% volumetric efficiency. And that gives me 528,000 cubic inches per minute of air that my engine is going to want to be breathing in. Before we can do anything with this number, we need to do a little bit of a different equation here, and then we can come back to that number and finish off this equation. So I use a cotton k and air filter, and k and guarantees that their air filters are going to flow 10,419.84 cubic inches of air for every square inch of filter area. And then we're gonna multiply that by two because we're dealing with a four stroke engine and it takes two full revolutions of the crankshaft to actually ingest its full displacement of air. So now we're taking the k &N's guaranteed cubic inches per minute per square inch of filter area multiplied by two, and that's gonna give us the amount of airflow in a four stroke cycle that that filter will provide. We're gonna take k 10,419.84 times two, and that equals 20,839. So we're gonna divide the cubic inches per minute that our engine breathes and divide it by the cubic inches per minute that the filter provides per square inch. And that is going to tell us the size of air filter that we need to provide our engine with enough air. So at cubic inches per minute that my engine requires, 528,000 divided by the cubic inches per minute that K&N air filter provides equals 25.33 square inches. So I need an air filter that is gonna have 25 square inches of effective filtering area to be able to give my engine the proper amount of airflow for it to operate at its optimal performance. So I know that the air filter that is in my shovel head right now is the correct size because I have just enough usable filter area on the filter that's in my shovel head. It is similar to this k air filter here. So if I wanted to know whether or not this k air filter was gonna breathe enough air for my shovel head engine, then I would need to figure out the filter area, the effective filtering area. And what I mean by effective filtering area is the area where the filter is actually able to breathe. So I'm gonna be measuring this and I'm not gonna include these rubber pieces and I'm actually gonna cut out the black part of the filter where the rubber bits have actually kind of molded their way into the filter area because that's not gonna breathe very well either. So if I measure this, that gives me about an inch and a quarter of filtering area, of effective filtering area. So to find the area, I'm gonna take that inch and a quarter multiplied by my diameter, which is, I'm gonna say five and a quarter, it's pretty close to five and a quarter, and multiply that by pi. So 1.25 times 5.25 times 3.14 equals, that's only about 20 square inches of effective filtering area, where my engine needs 25 square inches of effective filtering area to be able to get the proper amount of airflow going into my engine. Okay, so now let's say that we've got a paper air filter that breathes 4.95 cubic feet per minute. We wanna figure out what that is in cubic inches so that we can apply it to this equation that we're working on back here. So we're gonna take the cubic feet per minute that our paper air filter would flow and we're gonna figure out how many cubic inches per minute it actually is. So 4.95 multiplied by the amount of cubic inches in a cubic foot, which is 1,728 equals 8,553.6. And then remember, we wanna multiply this number by two, same way we did in the last equation, because we're dealing with a four stroke engine times two equals, so that gives us 17,107.2 cubic inches of air for every square inch of paper filter. 
So that's how much airflow our paper filter is going to provide for every square inch. So we're gonna take that 8,553.6 and we're going to multiply by two and then that's gonna tell us the amount of airflow that we're gonna get on a four stroke cycle with the paper air filter. So our paper air filter is gonna give us 8,553.6 cubic inches per minute per square inch of filter area. And we multiply by two for a four stroke engine. So it's gonna give us that 17,107.2 cubic inches per minute of airflow for every square inch of filter space. So now we're gonna take this number and we're going to divide that number by it. So we're gonna take that 528,000 CIM, divide it by the 17,107.2 CIM that the air filter actually will provide if you're using a paper air filter. And we're gonna see how big of an air filter I would actually need for that. So 528,000 divided by 17,107.2 equals 30.86. So I would need a paper filter with 31 square inches of filter area. For me, a cotton air filter just makes sense because that's what breathes better. And I like cotton air filters because I can rewash them and reuse them. I don't have to keep buying a new air filter every time it needs to be cleaned. So that is my little bit of math for you guys. I hope it's helpful. I, I don't know. I hope you guys can use this. It was really helpful for me and it actually it took me a long time to actually kind of grasp this idea. I originally started trying to figure this out because somebody had told me that my air filter was way too small, which it was, but I wanted to investigate and figure out how small of an air cleaner I could actually get away with before going too small. So some of you guys might be familiar with these velocity stacks, and this is actually what I had on my shovel head before I realized that there was such thing as like volumetric efficiency and your required CFM and all these things. And this is the air filter that comes out of this velocity stack. It's got a very little filter surface area. So I took that off right away and I started investigating like how big of an air filter I actually needed for my bike. And I'm actually really glad that I did that because it just like, it gives me so much more peace of mind just knowing that my motor is actually getting the amount of air that it needs. So I know that if I'm like having starting issues, it's not because of the airflow in my engine because my air filter is big enough. One sure sign of the fact that my air filter was way too small is I had a ton of carbon deposits on my pistons and of course on my spark plugs and just in my engine and that's not very good because you can end up scoring your cylinders and like you know it's just not good for your engine to be running that rich a little bit of rich is okay because you're not running too hot then at least if you're you know you're not running lean so you're not going to be running hot but uh you don't want it to be that rich as rich as mine was so as you guys can see, if you're looking to get away with like a smaller air cleaner, in my opinion, cotton is the way to go. From everything that I've read about k filters, they seem to actually be really well made. They seem to actually be tested and like just proven to be really good. And from different things that I've read online, they're actually like a preferred filter with people who build high performance race engines and stuff. So I really hope that this actually helped somebody out and um, let me know guys if it, if it worked for you, if this was something that you were looking for and please tell me what kind of air filters you guys are using and if you know of a better filter than what I'm using. And like always guys, like you know what I say, if you like what you see or if you just like me or even if you don't like me but you like my bike, then like this video, comment down below and subscribe to my channel. And like always, my lovely YouTube people, I will catch y'all on the flip side. Peace. So we're gonna take the, uh, let's hold on a second.